Welcome back to the Fast Motorsports Mod Series, where we talk popular mods for trucks, specifically to this episode, diesel trucks. We're talking about compound turbos, tuning, and propane injection. So kicking it off with compound turbos and what they actually are, AKA Twirly Whirly Get There Early's, Tennessee Twister Biscuits, Spooling a Caesar. What the hell is even that? Whatever you want to call them, compound turbos are remarkably popular and have been remarkably popular for not only diesel performance going fast, doing burnouts and sounding cool. Give me a hell yeah. They're also a highly functional upgrade, but why they're so popular really can be understood when you start to look at how they actually work. See, as much as you like to pop the hood at a show and look at all the cool custom powder coated piping, compound turbos have been a thing forever and ever because they're functional. So the way that a compound turbo setup works, if you're not familiar and don't want to get destroyed by, you know, asking a bad question or a silly question in a Facebook group and mean people having a bad day decide to ruin your life. Not that that's ever happened. Compound turbos, you have a large low pressure turbo and a smaller high pressure turbo. Now, depending on who you ask and what video you watch and what article you read, some people will refer to that larger low pressure turbo as the primary and the smaller high pressure turbo as the secondary. And then you'll flip one more video or one more article or talk to one more person. It's the flip flop. It's the small turbo is the primary and the big turbo is the secondary, but that's not important. The important thing to know about compound turbo setups, and I'm sure we'll put graphics here somewhere, is you have a larger low pressure turbo and a smaller high pressure turbo. How that actually works in reality on your truck is that larger low pressure turbo is sucking in atmospheric air. So the air from the outside, it then compresses that air because that's what turbochargers do and feeds that compressed air to the smaller high pressure turbo. And this is where it gets really cool because that smaller high pressure turbo doesn't know the air it's being fed is being pressurized. It simply will pressurize again, giving you a compounding effect of pressurized air. That air is then fed through the intercooler and into the engine. Now this allows for a bunch of different things, but most notably you get better low end power as the smaller turbo spools, it takes less time. And then as that larger low pressure turbo spools higher in the RPM range, you get better peak power. So a compound turbo among many other benefits gives you a much more linear power band, especially when compared to something like a big single turbocharger. Think of like an S476 second gen swap, which there's nothing wrong with. It's just a very different setup with different benefits and different drawbacks. So compound turbo setups, besides providing obscene amounts of power in the red application. On paper, it should be good for a little over 2,500. We'll see once we get it in the truck. It can also give you a much better overall daily driving experience, much better towing capabilities than some other alternative turbo setups. Now, when it comes to the exhaust side, getting all that hot air out of your engine and away from your truck, the flow is actually the opposite. So, it starts, the exhaust gas starts by being fed through the smaller high pressure turbo and then is fed to the larger low pressure turbo, which if you can imagine as that RPM spins and as that exhaust gas gets higher and higher volume, that escaping through the larger low pressure turbo allows it to spool up higher in the RPM range. Now, these days especially, and this is a bit of a tangent, so just bear with me, we go on lots of tangents around here. Well, I guess we all knew that was gonna happen. So it's out and uh, maybe everybody, everybody can relax, huh? Second gen swaps, specifically to the Cummins application, although compound turbos are not limited to Cummins, second gen swaps have gained a lot of popularity as have third gen swaps and drop in turbos. So I say all this to say, if you're looking at a turbocharger upgrade, there's a ton of options and it really comes down to budget, goals, what you want for the truck. and how you want to set things up. There are certainly upsides and downsides to compound turbos, especially when you start looking at pricing and sizing, there's a lot of considerations. There are probably just as many different ways to set up compound turbos as there are trucks. So if you're thinking about compound turbos or just a turbocharger upgrade in general, reach out to your favorite diesel shop. If you've got a diesel mechanic that you trust, a diesel performance shop that you trust, 
reach out to somebody that you've worked with before and that has experience in turbochargers and they will steer you in the right direction. There's an ancient Italian maxim uh, that roughly translates to uh, he who is resistant to change is destined to perish. So why don't you try to open up that mind of yours? You know, it's like, look at Kevin. I mean, he's tuning, specifically diesel tuning, although the principles we're talking about here probably apply to, well, just about everything. Now, the, the reason we're talking about tuning is because there's a lot of misunderstanding and there's a lot of misconceptions two specifically that we'll address here in a second about diesel tuning. The first one, the first big myth, the first misconception, the first thing that it seems like a lot of people have good intentions but don't uh, quite understand, they're not quite there yet, is that the tuning platforms and the people or companies that create tunes are two very different things. So let's take two popular ones, EFI Live and EasyLink, okay? EFI Live and EasyLink are platforms for tuning. EasyLink does not write tunes. They have never tuned a truck. Oh EasyLink, as a company, as a device, as a platform, allows tunes to occur. It allows them to be installed. The comparison that I like to make is if you were talking to somebody about video games and you said, what's your favorite video game? And they said, Xbox. You go, well, that's, that's a platform. That's, that's not a video game. That's the same thing as somebody saying, well, my truck got tuned by EasyLink. Well, technically, yes. However, the tunes, the actual tune file that says, hey truck, do this, do this and do that, was created, hopefully, by a professional tuner or a shop or some company that creates tune files and then that tune file was delivered to your truck via EasyLink or EFI Live or any number of other platforms. Think of those platforms as like FedEx and UPS. They didn't create your shoes or your whatever you order off the internet, they delivered it. Good way to think about EFI Live and EasyLink is they deliver tunes. They allow tuning to occur, but they're not tuning your truck. EasyLink is not tuning your truck. So if you get in the Facebook comments and you see somebody say, well, I tuned my truck with EasyLink tunes or I tuned my truck with EFI Live tunes, you can sit there smugly and go, I know better. I know what, I know what happened. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. That's the first myth. The second myth, and, and this is an important one, although a little bit probably less than the first, and that is writing tunes or creating tunes or modifying tunes is different than selling tunes. And this is especially important, and the reason we're bringing this up today is, I don't know if you guys have heard, but for certain trucks and certain applications, getting tuning can be shady. It can be tricky, let's say that. So. The reason that comes up is because nowadays there are hundreds if not thousands of websites, some based in Russia, some based in China, who knows where these people are from. I want to know who you are. But very few, if any of them, write the tunes, create the tunes. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing, and the reason I say that is, let's say you buy tunes from your favorite shop or website, a lot of the time, those shops and websites will be used to working with customers like yourself on tuning revisions, updates, issues, troubleshooting, because things can happen when you tune a truck that you don't expect. This car is simply invincible. And so the customer service or support from shops and websites that sell tuning is often fantastic. It's a great asset to have, but it's important to know that Selling tunes and writing tunes are very different things. In fact, the reason that this came up as a, as a concept was a good friend of mine with a fairly new diesel truck installed some actually emissions compliant tuning and he started having some problems with it. And I said, who wrote your tunes? Thinking he knows the programmer, he knows the shop, he knows the company. And he said, well, I bought it from, we're gonna blank out the name, but XYZ Diesel, let's just say for example. He bought it from XYZ Diesel and I said, that's great but they didn't write anything. I know for a fact that this website he was talking about didn't write any tunes. So who wrote them, who created them? And so that's the reason I pointed out is, depending on who you work with, depending on the shop, it's a great, great idea to know who wrote the files if you can obtain that information. But just know when shopping for tune files, selling and writing are two very different things. Again, our recommendation would be, if you have a shop, if you have a website that you're friendly with, that you've worked with, you trust, Use them, they will be a great support system. And he is going to try not to screw this up like everything else in his life. 
Last but not least, we're talking about one that used to be real popular and now not so much, but it does allow us to use a lot of Hank Hill references. Ah, oh, dang it, Bobby. Today we're talking about propane injection. I sell propane and propane accessories. Propane injection, which was very, very popular for a long time with diesel trucks, is used as a secondary fuel source or catalyst, depending on how you want to look at it, and was really popular back in the day because it increased efficiency, the low cost of propane allowed it to actually be cheaper to drive, even with buying the kit, to buy a propane injection kit, install it on your diesel truck, fill it up and drive with it, was actually, in some cases, significantly cheaper than just keeping your truck stock and just using diesel fuel. Now, there were some claims back in the day made by people that made money off propane injection kits that diesels only burned about 75% of the fuel, the diesel fuel being injected into the cylinder. Therefore, by installing a propane injection kit, which they just happened to sell, what a coincidence. Coincidence? I think not! You were burning much more of the diesel fuel, giving you much cleaner burn, much more efficient burn, and more power. 50 to 100 horsepower was pretty common, if depending on how you set up your propane injection, blah, blah, blah. So it was a performance mod, but the main benefit, at least as far as we've seen and heard, was the efficiency aspect. That's kind of where you get into trouble and kind of why they seem to have fallen off in the last 5, 10, 15 years. Now I know the first question you're asking, propane, what does that do? You see, as more and more modern diesel trucks become more and more efficient, that 75% burn rate that people used to push back in the day has been very, very hotly debated among diesel experts. Now, that won't, we won't go as far as to say that that's been disproven. I actually don't know that there's much data around that at all, but it has been argued a lot that diesels, especially modern diesels, burn much more than 75% of the fuel injected into the cylinder. So with that in mind, propane injection has kind of fallen off. And also, as propane has gotten more expensive, the cost savings have kind of dwindled. Now again, propane, when injected into a diesel truck, burns about a four to one ratio. So for every four gallons of diesel, you burn one gallon of propane, which back in the day when propane was cheap, Great, makes sense on paper, makes sense in the real world, save some money, live your life. As propane gets more expensive, it gets harder and harder to justify, plus when you include the cost of the kit, potential issues. Did you see the memo about this? Yeah. That said, as there always is, there are die-hard propane fans. In this economy? Maybe they know something that we don't. We're certainly not anti-propane by any stretch of the imagination. We just don't see it utilized very much. So that is episode two of the Fast Motorsports Mod Series. We hope that all this automotive nonsense benefited you in some way. And if we skip something, got something wrong, or heck, you just want to see us cover some other mod in a future episode, drop a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.